at Hard Knocks tomorrow, right? Woohoo! Years and years of waiting for the Bears to be on Hard Knocks, and the wait is over tomorrow, and I can't wait. Aldo, have you seen the trailer and uh, for the first original episode? What, what, did you have any thoughts going into that with the trailer and everything? I thought they nailed it. You know, uh, that the trailer captured the history of the Bears of my lifetime because I started watching the Bears when Dick, Gut Dick Butkus was still playing and Gail Sayers was still playing. You know, so I go back that far. And for them to start their trailer with some of the Bears players from that era and the 70s and moving on and so forth and capturing the spirit of the city and capturing the brand of the Bears has always been hard hitting and, you know, knock people down and hard running and so forth. I thought the 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 trailer the first 30 seconds or so captured the essence of the Chicago Bears and then they segue to uh, Eberflus's and Pace's uh, Chicago Bears uh, I thought it was really well done and I, I can't wait to see what they come up with you know we're just coming off the New York Giants one and the access that they had behind the scenes from a GM and player personnel was fantastic I hope we get a glimpse of what's going on in Ryan Pose's office well not only Ryan Pose you know, I think the McCaskies have tried to keep him away now the mm -hmm. whole time. So that's kind of interesting, too, to just kind of try and get an insight. You know, like I, I always make little jokes, like the reason why we replaced Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace with Matt Eberfruits and Ryan Poles is because you only had to replace one of the name tags of each of them on the office. It saves you like 12 bucks. <laughs> <You know? laughs> little, little details like that, just put it over the top, you know, but uh, uh -huh. I, I kid around. I, I truly, I do want to kind of get an insight on, you know, what that whole ordeal is. And yeah, uh, I, I guess the teams get a final say, but it's like, if yeah. they do, then the, the giants must've fumbled that one too, because it was yeah. a little intrusive there. I wouldn't be comfortable if it was my team necessarily. Yeah, you know, the Bears brought in, uh, this was three months ago, a new guy to be head of communications, kind of a special position that they had. And uh, that was the clue that we all should have known. They're going to be on hard knocks because that's going to be that guy's job to work shoulder to shoulder with the HBO producers and say, you can't use that. You can use this. And then during interviews, helping the players to what they say and so forth, which as a former communication specialist, that's the way to do it. You know, I, I, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but uh, Matt Eberflus, to me, is so much better this year behind the podium. He feels more comfortable. He, he, he's, he's more authentic. You know, he's been talking about uh, – uh, uh, Dave, you were talking about, you know, some of the X's and O's and stuff before the show and learning about that stuff. Iberflus is giving us uh, education about Austin Booker's strengths and what he does and moves, and he's good at the split, and he's good at using his arms and stuff. And that's stuff that he wasn't doing as much last year, and I bet you that came from the communication specialist and said, go up there and talk football and hopefully HBO will capture that too and uh, all of America but particularly Chicago Bears fans are going to feel really confident about the Bears after what HBO puts out tomorrow yeah I think Matt Eberflus had that really good glow up this offseason so I think that's kind of where the some of that uh, that charisma is maybe coming from too and all that but like I you know. said for sure I think they've all gotten a lot better at communicating maybe this year and I think like maybe part of that transition is uh even Ryan Poles seems a little bit looser this this offseason, right? And then Matt Eberflus seems – I think that pressure of being the losers and kind of having that that pressure of, like, answering for all these faults and, you know, wh why is this not working? Why is that not working? And now you kind of have this new approach and this new kind of – I don't know, this attitude about it. The air, in the, the air is a little different with, like, Caleb mm -hmm. and Rome and all this stuff. And if it doesn't work out, maybe it'll all resort – you know, back to what they were dealing with. Right. And it's like, why? Well, Caleb has all these tools. Why isn't it working and stuff like that? But I think you're right on the money and in terms of the communication being better. And maybe that's a little bit of help from that extra communications guy. Um, but for sure, I think there's just like a little different air in the building this off season. And I'm wondering if that's like performative or you think they're really just feeling it now, you know? 
I think there's a really, really good feeling. I mean, even back when Justin Fields was here, there were a lot of players on the Chicago Bears team who said, I really like what they're building here. They're doing it the right way, tear everything down, start from scratch. It's very painful for the players and, and the fans. We don't want to go through all that losing, but that truly is the best way to build an organization that's going to sustain success. And I think that with the acquisitions from this past season, this team is really, really feeling it at Hallis Hall. Uh, uh, and, you know, you got a, a dynamic guy like Caleb who comes in, you know, pr pretty polished because he's got done all the endorsement things. He knows how to talk. Everybody's talking about his leadership skills. He told the guys after practice uh, when they were going to go, you know, the final word, he said he gave them a mini lecture on cleaning up after themselves and being professional and so forth. You don't ever hear a rookie quarterback telling veterans in the NFL to clean up after themselves. It took balls on his part and he did it. And uh, the veterans afterwards were talking, you know, uh, with uh, admiration about that. But I do got to say this, uh, you know, uh, I disagree with you. I don't really want to see much of or any of McCaskey and very little of Warren. If Warren is going to be on, Paul, I think it has to be that he's doing something about the new stadium. But I don't want him talking football. I don't want him to talk about his days with the Cardinals and we won the Super Bowl and so forth. I want to hear from the players and the coaches. Yeah, and, you know, I think you're mostly going to get video on the players because those are the biggest characters. Those are the guys that – will give you the best show, the best entertainment product, if that's what you're after, you know. I mean, th there's some characters on this team, and they've already come out with little clips of, you know, DJ Moore and Keenan Allen talking mm -hmm. back and forth. And, um, you know, if, you, if you've if ever seen Demarcus Walker talk, you know, he's just he's just a good time to listen to. I mean, I, I'm not like that guy's my friend. He's just funny, you know. Um, Kyler Gordon's on there. Like, there's a lot, a lot of different characters. And yeah. um, it, you know, it definitely – it's wild because I, I said it so many times before, like, oh, it feels different. It feels different. It feels different. And this time I'm, I'm thinking, like, it is different. Yeah. Because even without Caleb, we still win this trade. We're not hamstringing ourselves desperately to try and grab something that isn't there in hopes of the future. No, we built this thing, and it still has a future. We have 10 draft picks next year, right? Yes, I mean, it, it still has plenty of options and paths to go no matter how the season goes mm -hmm. and ways to be able to, you know, fill holes and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. He's, I, he's I guess... laid out a really nice plan for rebuilding a team. It's taken a little while, but it's a nice plan. Not to kind of intermix sports here, but like this does have a bit of the, uh, I don't know how much of a Cubs fan versus a Sox fan you are, but it's got a little bit of that Theo Epstein 2016 Cubs vibe where, Sure. Theo Epstein came in and like top to bottom. And I've been, um, me and Polly have had many arguments about this where, you know, when you have like these fundamental changes, I think uh, as a franchise, you need to go as close to the top of the head of the snake as you possibly can. And that's where you start making the changes. But like the McCaskies are not going to give up ownership. I would love if Jeff Bezos owned the Chicago Bears. Don't like, you know what I mean? It's just, it is what it is. It's a competitive guy with lots of money, wants to win, wants to be successful. Yeah, but it's um, not going to happen. <laughs> but you can't get rid of the McCaskies, right? And that's kind of two part of my question is like the comment is, you know, 2016 Cubs vibe, I think is kind of here because of Kevin Warren and how much control they gave Ryan Poles for a change. Mm -hmm. And um, we know that McCaskies are just notorious for hiring yes men and guys that just agree with them and are just really polite to their faces and just do what they need them to do. But um, what do you think? And I, this has kind of been racking my brain and maybe somebody who's like more into the history of the McCaskies or like talks to people like Greg Gabriel. What do you think the McCaskies were working so hard to kind of hide or like shy away from and fighting off hard knocks for so long? Like, what do you think? Maybe not what we're going to see, because like you said, I hope we don't see too much McCaskey. And if we do, I almost want it to be like a, a Twitter moment where it's just like George is such a dork. Right. Um but like, what do you think they? What do you think it is about that that they were like fighting them off with the stick so hard? I think that they were listening to their head coaches. It, it's primarily it's been over the years. It's been Lovey Smith and the, the you know 
Tressman maybe not as much, but he wasn't that here that long. He couldn't do it in his rookie year because the uh, uh, the NFL will not allow a rookie coach to be featured on Hard Knocks. So in his second year, they probably were he, they were probably feeling you know we still got to fix some things before we had cameras rolling around. John Fox was certainly not going to let HBO cameras around. He's an old guy. He he was a guy that instituted the Greg Braggs rule at at camp. The so called so called Greg Braggs. Greg was taking great video at uh, practices and posting them on the internet and and John Fox was going crazy and that's when the Bears uh, now you can't pull out your cell phone camera unless you get you know look down like that you're gonna get shot by the local police out there so you know I I think it was them trying to appease their head coaches first and foremost I don't think that they were going they were trying to hide any you know dysfunction or anything like that they were just following the coach's word is my gut feel you know Eberflus has tricks up his sleeve so mm -hmm. we don't want to give any of those away, right? <laughs> uh, well, I think this new communications guy, you know, is is probably pretty good at saying, okay, this is how we get around some of that stuff. And don't you worry. In the edit, I'm not going to allow any of that stuff. So yeah. I think that's part of the formula as to why we're finally seeing them in the hard knocks.